everyone, it's Emily Fox. Today's video is going to be week three of my one week, one shelf challenge that I'm doing all month long. I pick essentially a shelf from the jar and I have to read books from that shelf that whole week. And so far it's been interesting. At the end of the last video, I picked my next shelf, which is purple. Look at me, matching. Unfortunately for me, our uh, purple is classics. <laughs> what were the chances out of 30 papers there were two that were purple. Like I, I could have gotten green, fantasy. No, no, purple. And it's also a combined shelf, which there are, were only three papers that were combined shelves. So I know exactly what's on these because I just know, because I only have three shelves uh, with classics. So let's take a look at what I shall pick first. So we have some uh, emotional support this morning. Thank you, we appreciate it. So I said 41 and 39. So this is 41. Thank you, Kitty. Uh, as you can see, there is War and Peace that I've been joking that I'm absolutely not reading this year. It's okay. But we also have all the Sherlock Holmes, which I have been meaning to read. So maybe we can start with that. And just to show you, 39 is this shelf, which contains mostly all my French classics and Jane Austen, which I'm almost done reading all of her books, but a bunch of French classics and some lighter colored ones because it couldn't all fit. So we might have to go and pick a second book on this shelf later, but let's start with some of this. Right, Kitty? Do you approve this one? Is that the right one? I think so. By the way, I wanted to address that I've been joking around that I don't want to read War and Peace, but it's just because these challenges last one week. Like I don't have time to read it. I want to one day, I've watched a TV show and it was really good, but I just, it's, you know, it's thick, it's thick. So I am excited to be actually trying to read this because this has been on my shelf a really long time and I picked it up, used bookstore, <laughs> you can tell. And I wanted to know, was it worth the hype? I mean, it's kind of older, but you know, sometimes they age pretty well, sometimes not so much, but I have been trying to find favorite mystery thrillers and I feel like it's Sherlock Holmes. I have watched the TV show Sherlock and I did really enjoy it. So I'm hopeful, I'm hopeful. I did look because my editions are combined editions. It's like two volumes that has, you know, all of his work. So I'm gonna start by reading the first story, which ends up being about a hundred pages. So if I show you, there you go. So out of 700 pages, my first book is gonna be the first hundred pages, which I think is very doable. And I think afterwards, there's something else I want to read essentially from the French <laughs> French shelf. So afterwards, I will try to go back to it depending on how long it takes me. But don't judge me for being a little disappointed every time I pick up a shelf. I don't know why that's always automatically my reaction, but this is the first one. I will be actually reading the first chapter right now just to see how it goes because English is my second language. So sometimes classics can be a little bit harder, but it's only like, I mean, it says page 12, but it starts at page like seven. So I'm going to read five pages and I'm going to let you know if I'm excited to actually read it or not. If I'm not, I'll just pick something else. Simple as that. We're good. The writing is fine. I didn't know it was written from the point of view of Watson, but it makes sense. The first chapter is just essentially a dem meeting and things are going to start happening. So I'll let you know how it goes in a few days, but should be okay. I don't know if it's going to be my first five star of the year, but hopefully. Well, that was quick. I wasn't expecting to film today, but I have to because I finished the first story in this uh, collection. It was very short. Like I said, it's about 100 pages, but it has been read. And I don't know. I mean, it's too short, I feel like, to really have that much of an opinion. I don't get the hype from one story. You're following, like I was saying, their first case, you know, they've met in chapter one. And I feel like there's a lot of like, oh, that, that's how I figured it out after, you know, other people piece it together. <laughs> so it's not that impressive compared to like the TV show or something from what I expected. Also, the story's in two parts. And I was very, very confused when the second part is introduced because you start following completely different people. You're essentially following Mormons um, in the US finding Utah. Um, <laughs> I was not expecting whatsoever. And then eventually, you know, things start making sense. Uh, two things I didn't care for. First off, there's a scene with a dog, uh, which I will, oh, 
if you know, you know. Not happy about that one. And two, I'm pretty sure the only female character that has a name only exists for like, you know, the trope, like woman in the fridge. Like she only exists for horrible stuff to happen to her for the story for the male characters to just happen. So not my favorite. It's a classic, it's older, whatever, still worth mentioning. Um, but one book is just not enough to really have that much of an opinion on this. It was fine. It was fine. Like a three stars. I'm not mad I started it. It was so quick that I think I'm going to have time to go back to it. We're going to read something else and then, you know, come back. Because I don't think, like I said, 100 pages is that fair. Like I didn't hate it enough to never want to continue. I will happily do so probably later. So not bad. Just I feel like it's so rare that I read such a short story and I'm like, it was amazing, you know? There are some, there are some. Uh, Becky Chambers, she tends to write really good short books, but generally speaking, not really. Before we go to the second book, I wanted to introduce today's sponsor, which is Atlas Coffee Club. If you don't know, they have a subscription box for coffee, which I think is a really fun way to discover your taste. They have coffee from over 50 different countries and you get to tailor your subscription to your wants and your needs. You get to choose how often and how much coffee you want to try, which I think is just a really fun way to discover new flavors of coffees you might like. Like they have adorable packaging and they come with a postcard from the country and also the different notes so you can figure out whatever you like. Currently I'm drinking this one from Malawi. It has notes of lemon, butterscotch and brown sugar. And hopefully that gives me the energy to read a second book for this reading vlog. I will link all the information in the description box if you are interested but if you use the coupon code EmilyFox you get 50% off your first bag on the website which is atlascoffeeclub.com slash EmilyFox. So Let's pick the second book because I think we need to go for the French classics. Don't mind the lighting, it's very early, um, but we remember these are the three bookshelf for the classics and this was number 39, 39. So we have all the French classics, but you can see that some of them are missing and some of them are not French, but whatever. Uh, it's because if we <laughs> back away <laughs> uh, on this side, I have a shelf that I had put some books right here that are classics that i was hoping to read this year and you can see some of them are french including this one there you go so even though it's not currently on shelf 39 i think it's only fair that i try this book because it is technically supposed to be on that shelf at the end of the day my channel my rules um <laughs> But this is Cyrano de Bergerac, which is a French play. I almost read it last year, if you remember, or if you don't, uh, I did a video where I let the squirrel that I've been feeding throughout the pandemic, you heard that right, uh, choose what I would read, the next classics I would read, which was Le Bruges. Quite frankly, she didn't have great taste, we're just gonna say it. And a lot of you mentioned actually you wanted me to let the cat choose my TBR, so I might do a vlog like that um, in March, it's only fair, we let the squirrel do it. So why not the cat at this point? But I did not end up reading this one and I really wanted to. So hence why it was on the pile of the books, the classics that I wanted to read in 2023. And it's shelf 39. So I think it works. I don't know that much about it, to be honest. I feel like it's a story that I'm like, oh yeah, I know what it is about, but do I? Not really. I feel like I've seen the movie. There's a French movie, right? With like Richard, no. Something de Bardieu? That meant. Anyway, um, so I think what I'm going to do is read this and decide if I enjoy reading um, French plays or just plays in general because I feel like I've never really read them. I read two last year and they weren't, you know, that amazing, to be fair. In both cases, the French authors were a little bit um, as they are and uh, they were making fun of the accent of poor people, which sounded very much like French Canadian didn't hurt my feelings at all. So <laughs> I don't know if we're going to get some of that in this one, but I am excited. It looks pretty chunky considering uh, it's 400 pages. It's just the other editions I had seen were in English and they were like 200 pages, but it's a play. So like, frankly, there's a lot of empty space. I have no idea how long it's going to take me, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to have time to, you know, finish this and go back to read at least one more of these. So that's the plan. A little pause for uh, cat tax because I don't think I've even seen, I don't think I've shown the cat yet. I don't think I've shown the cat yet and I wanted to take the time to say thank you for people that got her things on the Amazon wish list. She, I don't know if actually she's thankful, but I am. Uh, I did try to get a clip of her because she's a silly goose and I tried to get her to eat those like tubes of like cat treats. They, they look like go-gurts. 
she loves it. She loves it. Uh, I think it stinks. It stinks, but <laughs> you can see her in all her glory. I realized afterwards that I recorded her in front of a window and she's a black cat, so it's not really the best lighting, but she loved it. She, she's, yeah, very grateful at least for that. So <laughs> she makes me laugh because I thought she was cold because you know it's winter and she started sleeping in the basement on the drying rack which to be fair I do leave uh, a lot of random crap on it so she was comfy there but it's because it's under a vent too so I thought you know poor kitty is cold so I got her a heating pad because I'm obsessed with my heated blanket and I thought it was only fair and she loves it but only when it's off <laughs> this is what having a cat looks like why sleep on the bed with the heated pad when you can sleep on a table and annoy Emily. I know you adorable little baby. I also put her water right there because she will only drink it there. And like she has a scratching pad and she just sleeps on it. Like she's, you know how cats are. So yes, um, she's great. She's happy. She's just right now in the basement. So I don't want to disturb her, but yes, I will see you. In, I don't know two three days maybe we'll see okay quick update on the book we are day four um, this is my second day with it and you can see I'm gonna be able to finish it tomorrow so I will have time to read a second or attempt to read a second uh, story in the Sherlock Holmes series I don't know if my eyes are looking weird I just went to the optometrist and they had to dial up my pupils and I can't see right now so I have nothing better to do than do this update. So I wanted to let you know that um, the French is perfectly fine. So I'm flying through this, clearly. And it's fine. Like, I am I feel like I didn't know for real how I felt about the story because I didn't really know, right? That was the point of me wanting to read it. And I feel like Christian, the love interest, is such a douche. And I don't remember if Roxane, the female love interest... Um, is supposed to end up with Christian or is she gonna get with Cyrano who's like her cousin and like oh so ugly because he has a big nose um, but like she connects with him so much more through like love letters than with Christian who's pretty but she's very bored by him as soon as he opened his mouth so yeah I don't know how I wanted to finish but I wanted to say that I don't know if I really care for plays like I feel like this one I do because I am curious to see what it actually is about because you you know what Cyrano de Bergerac is, but like you don't. So I want to know. But otherwise, I don't think I'm going to go out of my way to read more plays unless I'm just curious. It's a quick read, but I don't feel like I'm enjoying reading them. Like this is my third one in the last like year. Um, and I don't think they're really my thing. So... I would be curious, though, if you've seen this in person. Is it worth it? Because I haven't seen many plays. Anyway, that's it. I'm going to go rest my eyes because hopefully <laughs> this looks fine because I don't know. Good morning. I finished a book and I wanted to review it before we move on to the next book because I went through this faster than I thought. I had a good feeling about it. I mean, it's not too long when you consider that this is a play and I am confused. <laughs> a little bit I feel like plays leave me wanting more I feel like there's not a ton of background and it makes me feel like I don't get why it's so popular because it was fine but I don't feel like it was that satisfying <laughs> to be fair uh, we're not in the what 1600 when it was published 1800 for some reason I was still thinking about Maria anyway so um I do have the answers finally Th the love undying love of a cousin for his cousin. Um, <laughs> I don't. I know. I know people still do that. Um, but I could. I could not. I, especially since they actually know them really well. I, this is so weird to me. So essentially, you have Roxane, which is you know his love interest, Cyrano's love interest, and then you have Christian, her love interest. And I feel like Christian is just so mean. There's nothing interesting. He feels very shallow. He's just into Roxanne just because. And she's just blinded by the words of Cyrano. But even then, anyway, we're going to keep it vague to not spoil it, even though it's very old. But I was not liking him. He kind of insulted Cyrano multiple times too. Like, why are you helping him? Like, for love, for your cousin? 
I don't believe in that. Um, <laughs> is my judgment silly? Absolutely. But it's my life. I can do what I want. Um, my critiques are very deep like this. Okay, but seriously, I can understand that it was really popular because it's impressive that a lot of this is written, um, it rhymes. I don't know what you say, how you say that in English, but beautiful. Yes, absolutely. I would have to see the play to really see if I enjoyed it more that way, but it was fine. I'm glad I read it because, you know, culture and now I know more, but I can't say that from a modern lens. It was that impressive, but it is what it is, kind of a love story, if you will. But now we're gonna go back to Sherlock Holmes because the second book is about 100 pages too. I don't think I'm gonna have time, I mean, I know I'm not gonna have time to read the rest of the book. I mean, it's 700 pages, um, but at least I wanna give a shot to the second story and decide if I wanna continue or not. Actually, if you have a favorite story in uh, all of his work, because Again, I have all of it apparently in two volumes. Let me know and I might focus on it, but I wanna see if I like the second one more, if I feel like it's a better mystery because I felt like the first book was really really focused on just like, oh yeah, this is how I figured out. And it wasn't really that exciting. I feel like this month so far, this whole challenge hasn't been the best. Like what were the chances, again, that I picked classics? like? all these fantasy books. It could have been anything, but it's okay. I'm finally getting the kick in the butt to try them. I've had Sherlock Holmes on my shelf for years now, so at least that's a good news. I'm doing my to-do list, I guess. Hey, I didn't think I was going to have time to finish it, but I'm currently dying in bed with my magic bag, so I have nothing better to do <laughs> than to finish this book. And eh, eh. listen, um, my interest was fairly low. I don't know. I'm just not really vibing with it. It doesn't help that you have a little bit of um spice, a little bit of racism throughout uh, the book. Again, shouldn't be surprising, but it's still annoying. It like it's so intense too. For example, in my edition page 147, um, they're talking about a possible suspect, and the way that they're describing them is just. Like, oh, they're naturally hideous, having a large misshapen head, and obviously they're cannibals. I, whatever. Um, and then, literally the next page. I shouldn't be surprised that Sherlock Holmes is sexist, but there we are. Uh, he says, women are never to be entirely trusted, not even the best of them. Cool. At least Watson disagrees, but only in his head, so... Yay, ally! Um, so, <laughs> it's not really a good mix. When the book is not a five stars and then you add these things, it's just, I lose interest. You know, sometimes I'll look past it if I'm loving everything else. Obviously, I will resent it, but it, it's not, it's not great. Um, I feel like both of these, I don't think I gave a rating to any of these books so far. They're all kind of three stars. It was a very mediocre week. Um, yeah, shouldn't have trusted the classics. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, there are plenty of classics that I like, but it hasn't been a great month reading-wise so far. I have been feeling very much in a slump, which I don't know if that's affecting... It probably is affecting my readings, but I don't think these books were that amazing. But, you know what's left? I get to pick one more shelf, because we have one more week left, um... Anything but purple, please. <laughs> okay, let's see <clears throat> what I shall be reading for the last week. I'm so nervous. <gasps> Yay! Finally, fantasy! Actually, I'm gonna show I'm gonna show you the number, but it means nothing to me because I don't know these shelves that well. Uh 12. There are six shelves per bookshelves, right? So it's the oh oh no. Why? There has the first shelf that I picked this month was the only one I was really excited to read. Uh, and it's not fair that so far I think the one I had the most fun to read was Stephen King, which I really didn't want to read. So maybe it will change my mind. This is, spoiler alert, uh, a bunch of like YA fantasy that I've been meaning to get rid of. But I'm sure I can find a favorite because for anyone that wanted to read it or unhaul it all month long, you've been lucky so far this year, uh, this month. So... We're gonna make it good, Emily. Don't don't be don't be poo-poo head. To be fair, again, the cramps, but 
I'll see you next week. Cross all your fingers for me. I, I will need all the luck. <laughs> I'll put more videos on the screen, including uh, the past two weeks of this challenge. It's been fun-ish so far. On the bright side, I'm reading books that I wouldn't have picked if it weren't for this challenge. So we're grateful for that. I'll see you next week. Wanna meet you